Hey guys, how you going? Welcome to my uh, new series called How I Do. Uh, it's basically a how-to but without a recommendation to actually copy what I do. Um, so this is how I make uh, baby duck food. Uh, in here we've got uh, some frozen peas uh, collected from the garden last year and we've got some eggs from my chickens and all I'm going to do is cook this up and uh, smush it up a little bit and then we have uh, scrambled eggs and peas as baby duck food okay guys so we've uh, we've got our duck food uh, time to test it out see if these guys like it oh yum 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 yep they like it well guys I hope you've enjoyed this short form video and if uh, you would like to see more then hit the like button below uh, and next week I should be covering uh, how to sharpen a chainsaw blade. Well, how I sharpen a chainsaw blade. Hey guys, welcome to the second episode of How I Do. Uh, this week uh, I'm going to be showing you how uh, I sharpen uh, the chain on uh, a chainsaw. Uh, now this is the uh, chainsaw bar, this is the chainsaw chain, this is the chain break and just on here there's little teeth uh, and whenever touching a chainsaw chain you're going to put your gloves on so you don't cut yourself. Uh, and the, the official way to do this, or the recommended way of doing this, is uh, you apply the chain brake that uh, disengages the motor and uh, also uh, applies a physical brake on the chain so it doesn't move. Uh, you're going to find a starting point and then all you're going to do is put the um, file in line with the teeth and drag it across the face of the tooth uh, and that's going to sharpen it up. Alright, so just a close up on uh, this tooth here. This is the, the tooth of the uh, chain and uh, this is the cutting surface along the top here. Don't ever touch these, they're very sharp. Uh, now, as you can see, just here there's an angle across the top and that's where you're supposed to put the file in, get it lined up perfectly and all that's doing is sharpening out this side here, this curve, and also the um, edge on the top. So that's how you're meant to sharpen a chainsaw blade. But this is how I sharpen a chainsaw blade. So I actually put the file into uh, a power drill. And that means that it's a lot quicker and a lot easier to sharpen. All right, so what we're gonna do this time on the blade is, is push it right back in and then start it turning, hold it in place, speed it up. And as you can see, all those little metal chips flying off And you very, very quickly, as you can see, you sharpen that uh, tooth uh, very, very quickly. Then you just move on to the next tooth. A lot of chains have a, a marker somewhere in the chain where they were linked together. I use that as a starting point. Um, but if you don't have a, a link like that in the chain, then uh, just put a blob of um, Sharpie or something on top of a tooth. And then you just go around and do each one in turn. I actually don't use the chain break uh, for this because it's very easy once you've done a tooth just to move the next one in. Obviously it's the other facing the other way so you'd actually come in at this angle uh, about there and again same process and it's sharp. Uh, now obviously this does eat up your chain a little bit quicker than doing it by hand um, you are taking off more surface metal each time but it does save you a hell of a lot of time uh, sharpening up the blade uh, the chain right so uh, this is the link on the still and as you can see there's a uh, one tooth on this side and the next tooth along is also on the same side and just in the middle there's a blanker that's the bit where they join the chain together um, but it is a still chain I don't know if it's a standard feature on other chains um, but yeah, so that's how you know where to start and stop. Uh, and yes, it is actually a chain and a bar, and I do, do know that I refer to them as a blade, but uh, they are not, there is no blade on a chainsaw. 
Anyway, guys, I hope that uh, helps you understand how I'm sharpening my chainsaws and how I get it done quickly. I hope you've enjoyed this video. As always, please feel free to leave comments uh, and uh, give the video a thumbs up. Have a good day. Hey guys and welcome to another episode of How I Do. Today's episode we're looking at animal bedding, so that's bedding for small animals. Uh, I'm using it mostly for chicks and ducks. Uh, and what you're going to need is, to, obviously you're going to need your chainsaw. Uh, and you're also going to need uh, a smallish log, one you've cut up for firewood. But um, So that's the uh, cross section on the log, you've got the rings there. Uh, and then what we're going to do is cut across the grain. Uh, along with the grain. Uh, this gives you an idea of what I mean so that your chainsaw blade rips out nice long strips and that makes perfect animal bedding. Anyway let's uh, start up the chainsaw and I'll show you exactly what I mean. One thing guys to uh, get this method to work you are going to need a very sharp chainsaw blade otherwise you're just going to produce dust. Um, if you need to know how to sharpen a chainsaw blade, then last week's video does cover uh, the sharpening of the chain on the chainsaw bar. Uh, now this method, as you can see, makes uh, lovely animal bedding. Uh, if you let this stuff dry out as well, it also makes really, really good fire lighter for, for log fires. Uh, and of course it chops your firewood, so uh, you don't have to do it with an axe later on. Uh, this wood I'm actually using, it is from the Tree of Heaven, which is an invasive species, grows very, very quickly. But I'm sure you'd get similar results using something like pine. Anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, we'll, of course, be covering another subject next week, possibly jam making. Uh, so please uh, like and subscribe. Uh, I'm almost at 100 subscribers. So if you can add another two subscribers, I'll hit that magic 100 figure. Anyway, guys, have a fantastic week uh, and I'll talk to you on Sunday. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of How I Do. Um, as you can see, this week we are going to be making some fruit jam. In here I've got some strawberries and some raspberries. Uh, what we're going to do is clean these up a little bit, um, take out all the green bits and just get them ready for the jam making. Uh, I'm using roughly this many amounts of fruit. And to go with roughly this many amount of fruit, uh, in here I've got uh, exactly that much water. Okay, so that's uh, boiling away uh, and I'm going to go and uh, prepare the fruit. Alright, now we've got all of the strawberries and raspberries this many uh, nice and clean-ish. Um, what we're going to do is very carefully just um, cut them up into quarters uh, so that while we... Uh, uh, boil them away you can get all of the nice juices out of them but just take each one in turn cut it very neatly into four and once all that's done what we're going to do is add it to the water that should be about to be boiling okay, so we're going to take our quartered strawberries and just add them into the big pan 
Now, of course, cover your pan uh, and let that heat up uh, until it's uh, just about boiling and reducing a little bit. Now, of course, if, like me, you're using uh, an old Soviet-era stove, what you want to do is put it on number four, uh, and that should be about the right temperature for your strawberry jam. Okay, guys, so we've got our um, hot uh, water with uh, strawberries and raspberries in, uh, and now the next crucial step is uh, we're going to add the sugar. What you need to do is figure out the relative amount of sugar that each fruit has. Uh, obviously then you can figure out exactly how much um, sugar you're going to need to add, and there is a perfect ratio. Um, but I'm really lucky because uh, they actually sell uh, sugar pre-packed uh, in packets that are exactly the right size. It's uh, it's called a bag, so you get your bag of sugar and pour it in. And that's the exact right amount. You will find those in shops. Uh, just go to the sugar aisle and just look for a bag of sugar. Okay, so we've added the sugar. Now we're going to go away and leave it for an amount of time. Uh, and when we come back, we can start testing uh, to see if we've got some jam. Okay, so now the jam's been cooking for a certain amount of time, and uh, we're just going to test it. So what you do is you get a bit of jam, put it on a, a cold plate, and put it in the fridge. Uh, and as you push it, you see how it wrinkles up? Just like jam does. So this is almost ready. Still a tiny bit runny, but give it another minute or so and uh, the jam will be done. Well guys, the jam's almost ready uh, and I'm going to put it in the fridge, but first of all you've got to sterilize your uh, mason jar or, or whatever jar it is you've got. Put that in the oven for a few minutes uh, and get it nice and sterile. Uh, of course, I'm just going to use an old coffee tin. Alright, so this is what the uh, jam looks like. Uh, as you can see that high bubbling in the middle, that's because the temperature's gone up above boiling there, so the water uh, is coming off very, very quickly. Uh, this stuff is hot enough to take off your skin, so please wear face protection, eye protection, put your gloves on, uh, and don't just uh, use your bare hands to pick up the pot and pour it into your uh, jar. Well, there you go, guys. Uh, one uh, nice, beautiful jar of uh, strawberry and raspberry jam. Now don't forget this is hot as all hell, um, so I'm going to go and put it in the fridge now just using a um, cloth, uh, and yeah there we go, That's ju just to recap the uh, recipe, uh, in here we have fruit, sugar and water, that's it, heat it up and you've got jam. Well then guys, that's how I do it, I uh, hope you've had a great week, uh, and I'll talk to you on Sunday.